Here, animal and vegetable life flourishes, first in the form of microscopic algae, and later the zooplankton that feed on them. Like veritable jungles, the seaweed provides shelter to millions of creatures hoping to remain unnoticed among the dense vegetation. Kelp forests like this one contain so many different species that their variety of wildlife can be up to 20 times greater than in the warm waters of tropical seas. This crab has cultivated its own garden above its head in order to remain unnoticed, but the effect is very different when it is time to move house. The brown seaweed is fixed onto the substratum by means of a strong claw-like grip the only function of which is to serve as an anchor against the strength of the storms and currents. They do not absorb anything, nor are they in any other way similar to the roots of more developed plants. These provide an incredibly strong hold, a firm base for the rest of the plant whose biological obligation is to float and reach up to the light at the surface. Vertebrates that share the rocks with them also know that here you have to cling on hard if you don't want to be swept off. This is a world of washed out colors and soft forms. The cloudy water and the strong undertow mean the polyps here do not develop the hard forms nor the brightly colored designs of tropical coral reefs. They try to catch their quarter of plankton here where food passes in front of everyone, and all you have to do is take it. The herbivore fish like these graze as if on a meadow by a forest. They form the next layer up in the food pyramid, turning the seaweed into meat. Their chromatic pattern is the same as that of zebras, the most distinctive thing in this ecosystem of discrete beings, the browns, the ochres, and the cloudy waters. The masters of mimetism are without a doubt the cuttlefish who can control their pigment cells at will depending on the situation and their mood. A very useful skill when the predators are out on patrol, ready to pounce at any opportunity. This is a heterodontiform shark, specialized in detecting invertebrates hiding in the sand. This ray is also a threat for anything that will fit in its mouth and uses its sensors to search for food on the seabed. Dense waters, thick with biomass, full of mouths that eat everything. The warm water southern seas always hold surprises, especially the experts in camouflage. It is precisely here that we will find two of the most incredible disguises in the animal kingdom. The sea dragons live in no other place in the world. This one is a weedy sea dragon looking for prey among the fronds.
But the apotheosis of this style is the other species that lives in these waters, the leafy sea dragon, a baroque fish related to the seahorses. Like a madman's dream, it proudly glides in its vertical world. By suction, it traps fish larvae and crustaceans, which die without ever knowing what it was that ate them. They're very sensitive animals. Light, pressure, or stress affect them enormously. Nothing in its life which lasts for around seven years is ordinary. Its biology is an enigma, and perhaps it is best it should remain that way. The abundance of fish around the forests of kelp and seagrass also attract the sea lions who soon will establish their breeding colonies in the rockiest areas. But they must never forget that this coast is dangerous. When they dive into the water in search of their usual prey, they never go further out than strictly necessary and always looking down in the azure depth where the great killer lurks. The sea lions are strong animals and excellent divers, but they try to make sure they never swim alone. Almost all the fish that live in open water swim in groups. Without the protection of the seabed or the seaweed, the best tactic is to hide behind others, hoping that if an attack comes, you will not be the unlucky one. Synchronizing their movements thanks to the nerves running along their sides, banks of fish like these barracudas are both predators and potential prey. But the open waters are not an easy place in which to live. Only those fortunate enough to be sufficiently large to be respected can wander alone, like shadows, filtering the only abundant food source, the tiny plankton which this devilfish devours by the kilo. The others, small and vulnerable, mass together, trying to form larger beings in the hope of dissuading hunters. If they are attacked, the confusion is such that it is very probable that none will be caught. Everyone is both hunter and hunted, sea creatures of different sizes in search of food, and always an enemy somewhere close by. These species that swim with no contact with the seabed are called pelagic and know how to make the most of the gift from the Antarctic. However, these waters are not equally welcoming to all. Here, where the confluence of two very different marine currents created a paradise for animals, is hell for the intruders at the surface, where the roaring forties make this one of the most dangerous places in the world in which to travel by boat.